My name is Kara Shirey. I'll be conducting the interview. So uh, how long have you been acting and what got you involved? I have been acting all of my life. I have faked so many relationships. <laughs> then it got serious. Now, uh, I've been acting for about 10 years now. Um, but ever since I was a kid, uh, I always wanted to be an actor. And then I got into actual filmmaking and in turn became an actor because of that. So uh, how many films have you performed in in the past decade? I would say close to 18, but you can only watch four of them. So. Wow. Uh, so what's been your favorite role so far? My favorite role was I played a villain. His name was David Cherico in a movie that uh, will never be released. But it was an awesome experience because the character was so very well written. I wrote it. And <laughs> I'm very humble, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, it'll, it'll never. Uh, all that footage is probably long lost by now. But would you say that's been your most challenging role, or is there another one? I'd say my most challenging roles has been, honestly, my two biography uh, docudrama films that I've done, because you know it's they're very personal. So I'm having to relive a bunch of things from my past that, uh, you know, I would rather forget about, but, you know, here we are. So what's been your biggest achievement as a filmmaker? Biggest achievement? I would say... <sighs> and it has nothing to do with being a filmmaker, but I, I guess just... Um, all of the friendships that I've gathered along the way with other filmmakers and actors because as a whole uh, all of my films have about the same viewing ratio and they're available on several different media sites and whatnot but nothing's ever went huge or anything but friendship I mean all those will last for a long time the memories which performance are you the most proud of <sighs> most probably the edge the edge was uh it started out as a podcast uh it was a the very first comedy troupe in, in kentucky we did uh, uh satire we did basically skit and comedy for seven years we had seven good seasons and uh it was it was definitely a wonderful experience and then as all things do good things come to an end but that would have to be my favorite um, is there any film you've done that you could you wish you could burn all of the copies of? <laughs> <laughs> a few of them. Um, none of the films that I have done, uh, like as far as things that I have made, but I have been in things that I wish I uh, wouldn't have been a part of. Um, do and it, it wasn't really due to anything. Uh, on my side, it was either bad directing or bad casting decisions. So the people that I had to work with were um, not professional, but we still had a good time. I, could I think of one right off the bat? Yes, I could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I played, I don't even know, I, I can't remember my name in the film because the film never got made. It was filmed twice, or three times actually. Uh, I only did the first one. And I don't know what happened to any of that footage. I don't know where any of that went to. But it was called Another Apocalyptic Zombie Movie. And I don't even remember. I, I swear I don't remember my character's name. I don't even remember what I did. I think I was a paranormal investigator. But basically, the director just told me to have fun with it. So I did, but nothing made any sense at all whatsoever. So it just seemed like a long weekend of me playing with people and that was pretty much it so <clears throat> how much do you draw on your own experiences when you act like method acting uh, I do that a lot if I have to be angry uh, I always think of something uh, either currently that's happening that just really pisses me off or I draw from past experiences uh, same as if I have to do something where I'm very emotional crying Wise, I'll just think of some really bad things that have happened in the past, and usually, if I can just get myself in that mind frame, I'm okay. 
Do you mind elaborating on something that you think about that draws a specific powerful emotion for you? Something that you go back to? Uh, well, if I have to be sad or crying, I can either think about uh, my fiance who was killed or I can think about uh, when my best friend shot himself on my couch. Um, <laughs> just on a happier note, is there anything that you think about that just conjures up happiness or joy? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think about sex a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I don't know who's running the projector in my head, but he is a pervert. I'll tell you that. Do you ever find yourself acting in real life situations? All the time. <laughs> I've been married twice. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if you could star in a remake of any film, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. There's so many good films that need to be remade. And normally I don't like remakes, but there's a couple of them that, have, that were really good. Uh, if I had, if I Do you mind if I guess? Sure. David Bowie's The Labyrinth. You'd be totally wrong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see how that has such a big following, to be honest with you. Pet Cemetery. I could see a Pet Cemetery. I could be in a Pet Cemetery remake. The ground's gonna shower down there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite actor or actress? As far as actor goes, I have always enjoyed John Travolta films. And he just seems like a humble guy. I met him once in Ocala, Florida. And he introduced me to his daughter. Um, but he just seems like a really genuine person. Uh, as far as actresses, oh, I don't think I have a favorite actress. Queen Latifah. No, <laughs> not Queen Latifah. <laughs> Jenna Marbles, and she's a YouTuber. Oh. But she's sexy. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> she's a joke. Are you working on any current projects? Oh, yes. Uh, working, uh, finishing up my second docudrama, which is called The Broken Road. Um, um, and I'm really proud of those two films. They were two films back to back. It was The Road to God Knows Where, which was a docudrama about life in general, and then The Broken Road, which was, it, it's about um, failed past relationships and the lessons that I've learned along the way to try to better myself as a person, um, but both of those films, uh, and they've really gained a huge following uh, on Facebook. Uh, the Road to God Knows Where was actually shared by multiple uh, Facebook groups that deal with anxiety and depression and PTSD. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud of that. And then The Broken Road has four parts left before it is completed, but yeah. Do you find that your personal experiences draw you to specific roles? Well, such as those two, I guess. Well, definitely, because it's me. <laughs> but uh, certain role. Yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff with uh, uh, another uh, filmmaker named Jerry Williams, and he allows me to be just... <laughs> with The Edge, I gained a uh, reputation of being just this asshole pervert guy. And Jerry loves it, and he's just like, here, be you. <laughs> and I'm like... Okay, <laughs> so I'm doing, always doing all kinds of weird, weird stuff. So what is the most important thing you've learned from the directors that you've worked with? <sighs> with everybody's different, but what I love about my circle of friends is that they're the only, it seems to me like they're the only people who really get, they really get it. And they see the film community used to be huge. And there was premieres after premiere after premiere. And it was always a big thing. And then something happened along the way and everybody got so up their asses with perfection. And when you're dealing with low to no budget films, there's no such thing as perfection. And everybody just stopped having fun with it. And then nothing happened. It's, it's like everything kind of died. But slowly, I think everybody else realized that and it's starting to pump the life back into it and I'm really excited about that I really hope that it does because this group of friends like we we understand and we, we we all sit back and we'll take a look at all these other I call them wannabe filmmakers who they they come out and they keep preaching and preaching and they don't know what the hell they're talking about and they never make anything they come out people have a tendency of just talking out their ass 
all the time. Oh, we're going to make this movie, and we're going to send it to this festival and that festival. We're going to go to Sundance, and it's going to go to Redbox and Netflix, and then never hear from them again. And along the way, though, they are able to smooth talk really good actors and actresses that I know into wasting their time. And that's sad. So I've seen a lot of good things, like The Edge, for example. The Edge could have went far. And my people just got suckered in to con artists. And so they put our stuff on the back burner, and eventually it just kind of died because of it. I guess that's just the nature of the beast sometimes. Dude, nobody listen. <laughs> that's the problem. Nobody listen. Do you have a lead role or a supporting role in the project that you're currently working on? I am. <laughs> it's a docudrama about myself, so I would say yes. Are there people from your daily life involved in that process? <sighs> well, okay. The way that I've had to do The Broken Road, because it actually touches on um, these different women throughout the years, is I've had to, I've had to change their name because I don't want to get sued by nobody, but <laughs> I've had um, actor friends of mine um, who have stepped in to do voiceovers, and, and uh, some have acted uh, especially in The Broken Road, a lot of the filmmakers, uh, my friends, jumped in and, and helped me out by playing different roles. So, um, But nobody on a personal level, no, none of the people from the past. They, I mean, they have commented on it, and for the most part, everybody has loved what I have said, except for one person who got very mad at me, and I had to take that one down. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I had to replace that one, so... But, uh, but no, nobody personal is actually in it. Is that sort of the direction that you find yourself going in as a career, as an actor? What is going to happen is I, I felt compelled to do those two movies, uh, the, the, the two docudramas. Uh, at first it was just going to be The Road to God Knows Where and that was going to be it. But then there were so many people that was hitting me up through Messenger and they were like, you know, we loved the messages then that... The, the quotes and we loved how everything played out you've got to do you've got to do some more and I, I'm like well you can't add on to the present it is what it is and then it stops um, but I started thinking about it and I was like but I can take a different route there's so many different roads in life I can veer off so I decided to do the broken road because I feel like <laughs> it's funny because everybody's been in a relationship and when a relationship ends, you're supposed to have learned something. A lot of people don't. And that's why a lot of people get into the next relationship, which turns out to be like the one before because they wasn't paying attention or they keep making the same mistakes. And so hopefully people who watch it will get that general gist of it and start thinking to themselves about their personal past and how that they can take the steps to find something that is actually long lasting and meaningful as opposed to that's why any time a girl says, uh, I have a certain type, that's the reason you're single, because your type doesn't work for you. Pick a new type. So you find uh, that purpose in your work is just showing other people? I like to be helpful. You know, I have lived a very, <sighs> to be 35, I've lived, I, honestly, I go to bed scared to think of what else could happen. That's how much uh, that I have been through. Uh, I'm like, what else is there? You know. Um, but because of those experiences, I know that there's so many people out there who deal with troublesome pasts. Everybody has something. Everybody has a story to tell. And I feel like, as a society, if people stopped with that, hey, everything's going to be okay, and actually started explaining why it's going to be okay, then, you know, if I can, if somebody is contemplating suicide and they just happen to see one of my videos and they're like, hey, he's right, you know, there's always tomorrow, I can fix this. Well, then I did some good and I don't have to know about it, but it helped. So. That's a great mission to have. Do you prefer to have a lead role or a supporting role? <sighs> Probably supporting. I mean, lead roles are fun and. You know, you get to actually say, hey, I'm the star of this movie. But um, 
there there's a lot of roles that I have been put in that I'm I'm glad that I got that as opposed to something else um, because it, I guess it just all depends I it's mean, on the genre not so much the genre I, a lot of times people are very long-winded in their scripts they think that uh, more is better and sometimes it is but to have to learn so much and you know and, and go in there and say it 12 13 times uh, and plus I guess it all depends on the character too like for um, that one movie Final Offense which I was telling you about earlier uh, where I played the bad guy I liked that character more than I did the hero character because it was, I don't know, it was more challenging. And I, I liked um, the smoothness of, of the killer. For once, you had somebody who was intellectual and who had a lot of dialogue. I mean, I, I did have a whole lot of dialogue in that film. But the way I was able to play it, I, I just really wish there was still footage of that movie. Do you prefer acting or directing? Or directing what you're acting? <laughs> I, I would rather direct what I, yeah, because, let me, uh, <laughs> like I said, I've been at 18 films, you can probably watch four of them, and that makes me very mad. Uh, there is so many, uh, just wasted time, and it, some of them were really, really good films that just, because of either um, a bad director, or uh, a bad cameraman, or a terrible editor who never edited the film, or lost the footage along the way. Um, so much and so if I'm in control I know it's actually going to get done I mean you have to take into consideration we're talking nine ten years of, of acting and directing and whatnot and the only films that you can see me in besides Jerry Williams is my own stuff the rest of the stuff was trashed Wow that's yeah. unfortunate yes it is it makes you very weary are you often t compared to other actors? No. Don't, I don't think so. No famous actors? I've never heard anybody. No, people call me John Wayne Gacy, but he's not an actor. <laughs> 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 um, do you have any goals as an actor? I would love to make something that was put on Netflix or Hulu or even in theaters across uh, America. I would hope, and that's what we all strive for, is to get to Hollywood. I mean, but the the road, it's not a gold, it's not golden, you know. But it's paved with the destroyed dreams of many. So, but it, it, it's a wonderful place, I guess, to be once you actually get there, if you can get there. So we all have that same goal in mind. But in the meanwhile, if nothing ever does become of it. We should do it because we love to do it. Right. Because for years to come, once we're all dead and gone, it will still be there. It will be floating around on the Internet, and people will still get a kick out of the goofiness or get a scare out of, out of, some, of the, some of the good horror movies or something along the way. It doesn't have to be. I, I don't need millions of dollars. I just have fun with my friends. So when you're not busy filming, is that what you prefer to do in your free time? Like what kind of activities do you enjoy? I, you know, I don't... <laughs> you're all about the films? No, no, <laughs> I'm not all about the films. But I, I mean, I do write a lot. Uh, I've written two novels, one of them's published. Um, and then I get hired by other filmmakers to write scripts for them. And then sometimes I just, I have so many ideas flowing that I just, I've got 27 scripts just sitting on my computer wow. that are waiting for somebody to come along and do it. I don't have time to do 27 of them. And I don't, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people, hey, well, let's do this one. Well, I kind of, I don't want to. Here, you go when you do it. But like I said, you, you lose faith along the way with some, with some people because You've heard, let's do it, and then you get halfway through it, but guess what? They get interested in something else, and they don't even pay attention to this anymore. And That's it's, discouraging. To, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of talent. There's some really great actors and actresses and um, sound guys, and, and they, have, they have their stuff wasted. They really do. So what advice would you give to an aspiring actor? Ask me before you... <laughs> work with anybody. 
and I will tell Amazing you. Amazing advice. Yes. <laughs> because I don't care. And that's, you know, I've, I've gained that reputation. Oh, shit, what's James going to say? Um, I have been asked to view films before they ever premiered because they know that I will give my honest opinion even if it makes a mad and hurts their feelings. And some people, some filmmakers, cannot take criticism. They will never survive if they can't take criticism. And there are some of them that I like to pick on purposely because, because I, number one, I think it's funny. And number two, I'm trying to toughen them up because there, there's some of them that are really good filmmakers, but they can't take the criticism. And so I'll see them post something on Facebook and I'll say something making fun of it. And next thing you know, they delete that comment because they don't want people to pick on them. And I'm like, dude, you gotta, you gotta grow up. That's all there is to it. And if I'll pick on myself, I'll <laughs> gladly. Uh, Shoot the Moon, that was my first film. And it, it's a mafia film. Everybody else was doing horror. I said, nah, I'm going to branch away. I'm going to do a mafia flick. And uh, Shoot the Moon had a really good script. I was suckered in uh, with people who said they knew what they were doing and they didn't. <laughs> and so the editing turned out horrible. Um, but the movie is still enjoyable to watch. But I will sit there and I'll tell you right now, oh, shit, we dropped the ball. You know, so you have to you have to be able to pick on your own stuff, and trust me, I can sit back and pick apart my own. What's one of your favorite memories from on set? We filmed my second film was called Room One Ten, and it's a psychological thriller. Um, it got lost in editing hell too, and I don't even know where that footage is. I think it wound up in Michigan somehow, but <laughs> it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's been gone for seven years. Um, but it was it was so much fun because we actually had an entire hotel to ourselves yeah. for four days straight. So you just got like twenty people running around a hotel. So it was like The Shining, <laughs> kind of. Um, and we, we we had a blast. We had an absolute blast with that. And then the seven years of The Edge, we had so many guests, uh, special guests that would come on, and to have somebody try to be serious while you're sitting there purposely trying to embarrass them was hilarious. I, we had the best time with The Edge. And when it started out, it was just seven friends who always acted goofy anyway and then said, you know what, let's put it on air and see what happens. And we ended up with over 12,000 wow. uh, followers, which I know to a lot of people out there who have hundreds of thousands or millions, that ain't nothing. But to us in little podunk Kentucky, it was something. Um, and we had fans from uh, the UK and all over the world. And then even uh, two uh, big time directors who, I mean, th these girls are actually getting out there a lot these days and they loved it. And um, so that meant a lot to me that you know, people were listening, but we just had such a fun time with it. Cause we started out, <laughs> I would write the, the skits out and we'd have them on a laptop and we'd have our sound equipment set up. And then we would all be gathered around kneeling next to the bed like we were praying <laughs> and doing these skits and we just we had so much fun with it and then everything just went away so you've worked with a lot of actors are there any experiences that are negative that just stand out to you oh yeah there's plenty there's a lot of people i'll never work with again too because <laughs> we, we have so many divas let me tell you about <laughs> actresses in Kentucky especially. Surely they're not that bad. Some of them are very bad. Some of them think that they uh, should already be out in Hollywood apparently. And um, you don't know how many times uh, we've all heard, uh, oh, you're blacklisted. What? How? Who? Who? Who's looking at these lists and going, oh shit, we can't work with James Smith no more. He's on the blacklist. No, no, please. You've got this untalented girl mad because this other untalented girl is on set and they're arguing back and forth because she's got more lines than she does but she's the better actress and uh, some people uh, who've never acted who are more uh, a fake photographer but they want to be an actor and will fight with other people who have been actors forever and it, it's absolutely ridiculous honestly um, so there's a lot of drama on set Occasion. There, there, there can be, yes. And you always got that one person that doesn't want to work with the other people. 
Uh, and in that instance, well, you just got to get rid of that person because, you know. It's a toxic situation. Yeah. Well, if you got a bum leg, you don't kill the patient. Cut off the leg. So that's what we do. And uh, that, that's how you have to do it. If, if you're going to do indie film uh, in Kentucky or anywhere, it, I'm sure you every state's got this asshole that nobody wants to work with or, or he steals people's scripts or <laughs> I've had that happen um, or uh, he films a movie and then secretly behind everybody's back films it again with a whole other cast um, because he didn't like a certain thing or whatever it happens and it happens a lot and you just have to be weary of, of who you asked me earlier you know what kind of advice I would give ask around before you work with anybody because there are some bad apples out there. Thank you for joining us um, for the interview um, of an actor spotlight with James Smith. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm your host, Kara Shirey, and we'll see you next time.